Hi everyone, and welcome to the BFBS Archive. We've been collecting information about British military conflicts for more than 75 years. Operation Granby was Britain's contribution to the first Gulf War, but is it possible to tell you all about it in 60 seconds? The 1980s were a turbulent time in the Middle East. Iran and Iraq were at war for most of the decade. On the 2nd of August 1990, 600,000 Iraqi troops invaded Kuwait. Within 12 hours, most of the fighting was over. In two days, the Iraqis had complete control of Kuwait and the Kuwaiti royal family had fled. Diplomatic attempts to resolve the crisis went on for a few months, but it became clear that Saddam wasn't going to withdraw his forces. On the 29th of November, the UN passed Resolution 678 until the 15th of January 1991 for Iraqi forces to withdraw and authorizing the coalition to use all necessary means to force Iraq to comply after the deadline. 53,000 British troops formed part of the nearly 1 million personnel who were ready to liberate Kuwait. Don't miss all our great videos. Subscribe to our channel. Let's do this. Operation Granby explained in 60 seconds. On the 17th of January 1991, with Saddam Hussein refusing to withdraw, Allied forces started bombing Iraqi military targets. The RAF flew 2,500 sorties into Iraq, using mainly Jaguar and Tornado aircraft. 12,000 Iraqi troops and 2,300 civilians were killed in the six-week-long air war. On the 24th of February 1991, British Crown forces were given the green light to advance. British SAS troops were the first into action, whilst the UK's 1st Armoured Division took part in a huge left-hook manoeuvre, moving hundreds of miles to the west and outflanking Iraqi forces. British Challenger tanks were involved in several battles, destroying over 300 Iraqi vehicles, whilst dismounted troops were involved in trench fighting against the remaining Iraqi soldiers who were dug in. After four days of fighting, Iraqi forces were cleared from Kuwait. Retreating Iraqi soldiers set fire to hundreds of oil wells, creating huge plumes of thick black smoke and fire. The coalition suffered 290 deaths during the war, 47 of them British. It's estimated that 10,000 Iraqi soldiers were killed in the ground offensive. By the 28th of February, fighting was over. In less than 100 hours, Kuwait had been liberated. A ceasefire agreement was signed soon after. Phew! That was Operation Granby in 60 seconds. Okay, so maybe it was a bit longer than 60 seconds, but it was my first try. What do you think? Militarily, this was a textbook operation. It was fully backed by the international community and the United Nations. This is the first time that war fighting was televised in near real time. Footage from cruise missiles that were fired from warships in the Gulf Sea were broadcast on TV for the world to see. At the time, many people thought the coalition could have gone further, invaded Iraq and removed Saddam Hussein from power. But the objective had never been to change the regime in Iraq and UN had not mandated for it. So the war ended. Saddam Hussein would remain in power for another 12 years. Interesting fact, Gulf War Syndrome is an umbrella term given to many undiagnosed illnesses and strange symptoms affecting military personnel who fought in the Gulf War. Thanks for watching the 60 second episode about Operation Granby. Make sure you subscribe for more of these ridiculously fast and squashed together overviews of military history in 60 seconds. <sighs>